Hello, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Chainsaw Man Chapter 148. Another week, another opportunity for our boy Fujimoto to cook. And surely through the last couple of chapters, he's been giving us a meal. This chapter kicks off from the last one as there is an ongoing conflict between public safety and the church of Chainsaw Man. With all new developments such as the zombie-like Chainsaw Man caused by the Fire Devil, Special Division 7 getting back into action with with Quan Chi and Katana, and finally, Neyuta unraveling the church's plan as Fami wants to use Chainsaw Man and the War Devil's fear and make them stronger and powerful enough to slay the eldest horseman of the apocalypse, the Death Devil. There is a lot to unpack, yet way too little to work with. I noticed that kind of trend is going on with Fujimoto, and even this chapter is really just another piece to the puzzle, building up that hype chapter by chapter. But at least with what we know now, Fami's goal is going all according to plan, and it's just gonna get crazier from here on out. With chapter 148, Denji is called out for being one of the chainsaw zombies because he was that wannabe chainsaw man guy. After witnessing the extreme carnage in this situation, a crowd gathers as Denji is put on the spot. Umihiko tries to convince them that they are with public safety, but even some devil hunters have transformed into those chainsaw men. So you can't be certain until you see if he has that starter on his chest. It's definitely ironic that Denji is caught up in this mess, and as the real chainsaw man, he is being called out as a wannabe and even a church follower, even though he really wants nothing to do with them. Yeah, I really think him and Ayuda having that normal life is like impossible. Denji cannot get away from this life and I think a part of him kind of likes that. Yet before being outed, Quan Chi tells the group to run and she shields them from bullets using her body. Usually I just expect her to go kill Bill mode and slice down everyone but these people are also the ones that she's trying to protect with the public safety division so she just has to endure all of this and I think Fumihiko noticed that as well and believe it or not it feels like Fumihiko realizes something about Quan Chi. I don't know, maybe she developed feelings or some sort of acknowledgement or etc. But from what we know about Umihiko and her backstory, she appreciates being saved and Quan Chi put herself in danger for their sakes. So as they run, we cut to Yoshida's battle with Asamitaka and he managed to cut off her entire arm and nearly was about to cut Asa down and Asa barely manages to block the sword. It feels as though Yoshida is holding back or being hesitant toward killing Asa, which is interesting considering just how cold-hearted Yoshida actually can be. At first, I thought someone could have some sort of influence on Yoshida and put him up to this, but really, since the start of part two, Yoshida has been around Asa and seen her journey and knows what she's going through, so I can see how he could be hesitant. But in reality, Asa could also just be that much more stronger because of her powers. When he failed to cut her, Yoshida tries to pull out his octopus devil to crush slash trap Asa. Before he could though, Asa activates room 606 sword and turns her apartment into a weapon. Yoro then takes control as she notices just how much more powerful they have become. They transform without even touching the room and Yoro faces off against Yoshida and it's become clear now that bro is not built for this. Yoro is still actually clumsy with her new powers and forcefully crashes into a nearby building past Yoshida faster than he can even react. And before she knows it, Yoshida skedaddled. For whatever reason, he fled the fight. He must have either realized something or he is just way out of his league. It's probably a mix of both, honestly. But finally, with her growing newfound power, Yoru gets up and relishes in the moment as the world finally remembers her at last. This is very hype until you realize this is exactly what Fami wants. The world remembers war and fears it, and the world sees Chainsaw Man for what he is as a danger and fears him and their power grows in order to fight the great king of terror, death herself. It's literally going to be hell on earth. At this point from here on out, 
I'm expecting some very intense action. If we're sticking to Yoru, this is her chance to really flex her powers in one of the most chaotic situations in part two. Maybe we'll get to see Yoru versus Quan Chi next or other Division 7 members. That would be really awesome. I mean, just imagine if around the corner, Rize showed up and she's working for public safety and she's also an agent sent to stop the church. Even reveals like that would be absolutely incredible. Comment below what you brothers and sisters think happens next. What will Denji do? What will public safety do? And where do we go from here? Chainsaw Man is really getting interesting now. And I've seen a lot of discourse about maybe how there is drop in quality. Maybe Fujimoto's not cooking. He don't know what he's doing, where he's going with the story. And really just folks don't see the vision. I might have to double down and maybe make a dedicated video on Fujimoto and part two and Chainsaw Man in general. But let me know what you all awesome guys think. Remember to like and subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you awesome brothers and sisters in the next one. Bye-bye.